May the force be with you. Ladies and gentlemen, Carrie Fisher. Jerry is coming out on stage. Saskatoon, 
And so he was at the vet quite a bit, getting rehydrated. As you can see, he's trying to let the uh, marks a lot off my fingers. But now he's wearing a little Star Wars tie that he got here. And we had a little bandana said that, that says the force is strong with this one. But it starts getting a little embarrassing when I over merchandise my dog. <laughs> now you would say he was an honorary Canadian because he had the little the little oh, Canadian. Yeah, no, well and also he's had about eight hours of Canadian fluids pumped into him. So I think he's on you know, he's just floating down Canadian rivers here with you. He's been trying to get that out of the system for the whole last week. He got a lot of it out of it at the uh, Mutard uh, Conservatory. Oh. Well, to, to make him a little more Canadian, I got you something, Terry. Oh. It's, a, it's a very Canadian maple leaf leash that is and awesome. collar for, for Gary that you can rock for the rest of the weekend. <laughs> He's truly Canadian. He can represent. Got a little, uh, you know, Canadian bark, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have two microphones, uh, one in each aisle. So let's get to some audience questions. Let's start over here on uh, on this side. Okay, Carrie, thank you so much for coming here. My whole reason for even going to the expo. Um, oh, thank you. This is going to be a. It's a horribly stupid question, but I have to get it out of my chest. Uh, what do you think the first thing that it would be that Leo would say to Luke if she went up to that hill and found him at the end of the Forest Awakens? Where in the Sam Hill have you been? <laughs> <laughs> I have been running this whole damn rebellion all by myself, and you take off and hang out in the woods somewhere meditating. Three. And 
so that's really good. And I can't, I usually, there's one time travel when I watch. I, I have, uh, I've watched a little of Doctor Who, but there's another one where they go back in time in Scotland. Outlander, I really like that one. <laughs> and there's some other uh, Swedish ones that I've watched, the, the crime ones from Scandinavia. I like those, but then I have to watch them for, you know, like 12 hours to find out what happens. What is that called again? Binge watching. What is it? Binge watching. Binge watching. It yeah, makes sense that I would binge watch. So I, <laughs> I binge and purge watch. <laughs> revisit the Star Wars films? Have you ever, you know, sit down oh and TV and... Well, because I was finishing my book, I thought, well, maybe I have, I should watch it to see if it jogs my memory of any stories that I might have forgotten so I can put them in. And so I watched, uh, the first, I watched, uh, the, the, the first one in Empire, and Gary watched them. <laughs> and there's pictures on my Twitter account of Gary watching Star Wars. And I mean, he's really watching it. There's a picture of him watching Yoda and Darth Vader, who I think he preferred Yoda, thinking he was some, you know, mystical dog. <laughs> what did you think of uh, the movies? Aww. He's looking her face. He liked my performance. <laughs> All right, what is, uh, let's go back to this side. And I'm wondering what was your reaction to the golden bikini? Well, what was your reaction? <laughs> the boy's like six. All right, I'll tell you because I don't want to know. Uh, I thought George was kidding. He asked, actually sent for me to come up to San Francisco, and he showed me this sketch of almost nothing to wear. And I looked at it and looked at him and waited for a position. <laughs> um, but uh, he didn't. So then I thought, this was before the time when people used to go to the gym a lot. So I, I bought some leg weights. So that my, because I signed some of the pictures you guys have, but I'm very close to naked. So that's, I don't like to be naked a lot. No offense. Oh. Is that me? So, you know, especially anymore. But even when I should have liked it, I didn't like it that much. But I kind of liked wearing it. I thought I looked pretty cute in it. Woo! What? A lot of people do. <laughs> Thank you. I particularly like shooting the Rolling Stone article where they had me with all those preachers and I got to run through the ocean in the outfit. That was the best use of it I ever had. Oh, that and killing John the Hutt. In it. <laughs> it's great to murder big creatures in a metal bikini. Ask around. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. All right. There's no following that question. Uh, Carrie, you've had a very uh, prolific but largely uncredited career as a script doctor, saving Hollywood from itself for years. Are there any particular moments, bits of dialogue, anything that uh, you like, you're particularly proud of? I did uh, a line, my first one that I ever did, I did Hook for Spielberg, and there's a line in it where um, he's being introduced, uh, Hook is being, he does not be introduced, and he says, and now a man who, who's so deep, he's nearly unfathomable, and so quick, he's even fast asleep. So I like that one. And there's a line at the end of Lethal Weapon 3, which is, you're supposed to get old with someone, not because of them. <laughs> so those are my two favorites. Thank you so much. Now, speaking of scripts, when you, when you read the, the script for The Force Awakens, at what point did you find out about the fate of Han, or was that, was that on set that day, or did you not have any idea? You know, we weren't allowed to leave the um, office. We had to read the script in the office. We couldn't take it home, ever. 
So if you're ever trying to look at a scene and see where it falls in context to the movie, we would never know. So that was complex, but I did find out, uh, I think right away, uh, and then they took it out of the script so that no one would, because people were selling you know, pictures from the set and all this stuff. I mean, it was very strict around the set. We all had to sign contracts about this thick, saying that we could go to jail if we divulged anything from the script, which I think would be a nice way for me to go to jail. <laughs> I'd like to see my mug shot in like the, the hairstyle that I call the baboon ass. <laughs> I'd like that to be my mug shot when I divulge something. I did divulge something by accident, but I didn't know. I printed a picture of Sir, and on the back it said Space Bear or something. I didn't know that was the secret name of the production company. So that pretty much went viral. And uh, I'm, I'm a little bit of a wild card on that front. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, the biggest thing that shocked me about this group was the Mark thing. And so my whole reaction when I first asked about it was, what did Mark say? So, but he was good about it. Very cool. I like how we did that without giving away spoilers too, in case anyone hasn't seen it. That was very vague yet informative. We, we, we did that well. No, we did it well. We didn't say what actually happened in case. Has anyone not seen The Force Awakens? I think we're good either way. All right. Somebody had, well, nothing bad happens in it. <laughs> yeah. Really, it's just a sweet, lonely, and no, not, nothing really dramatic. <laughs> exactly how you think it would go. All right, we're back over here. Hey, my name's Drew. Uh, I just love that you said something about Elle Lander. That show is amazing. And uh, I have a quick two-part question. Well, the first part, not so much, but the second part's really quick. Uh, first part is the differences in filming between the with J.J. Uh, Abrams versus Ryan Johnson. I heard in a bunch of interviews with your son that uh, he's he said it's a bit of a different tone, like it's a lot of a, a darker tone. With in in the second or in episode eight with Ryan Johnson directing. These are pretty. I mean, to me, having done the first three, they're they're darker than those. Uh, but the thing with uh, Ryan is he's so, so specific about his vision. I mean, he shot a scene once, and he had an extra, one of the rebel, you know, walk behind the scene that was taking place. And then he reshot it because he wanted the extra to go the other way. And I thought, wow, you know what you want. So, I mean, that was pretty incredible. In terms of darkness, of course Adam is going to say it's dark because Adam is dark. <laughs> I mean, it's not like he has any comedy scenes. Well, there is one funny moment. <laughs> and, uh, and the second part, are you willing to share who you were voting for in the United States election? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. What do you think? <laughs> Certainly not that moron. Oh my god! Sorry, I mean, I always think because he's not a politician, it's refreshing. Coca-Cola is refreshing. You want a politician to be in politics, not some businessman that cheats people and won't let us see his tax returns and wears his hair like that and talks about his daughter like she's a piece of ass. But otherwise, If there's some kind of chip I can have put in my brain to erase him from my oh life. My <laughs> so, but otherwise, that's that's who I'm not voting for. Yeah, that's that's here. Here. Hello? Hi. Hi. Is another question about your work as a script doctor? What is the 
most common mistake you notice that screenwriters keep making? Well, a lot of times, dialogue will sound like dialogue. So you want to change it to, here's the biggest thing that bugs me. When you're talking to someone in a scene and you keep referring to them by name, you know, like, well, Gary, I just wanted to say that I think, Gary, that you are such an adorable... Gary, I find you so adorable. Like, we're going to forget that they remember that they know who they're talking to. So, honestly, it's, there's some movies you can watch, and it's hilarious, because they're constantly saying each other's names. And there's sometimes they just sort of blather out, and there's no, um, you know, like, I mean... So, I do like to have it sound a little more colloquial. And I don't think love scenes are as good as they could be. <laughs> then what do I do? Thank you. Thank you. Hi, first off, I saw you years ago in Calgary, and I'm really happy you came up to Edmonton now as well. I love Canada! We've been here all week. We were in Saskatoon, and now we've stayed there a couple of days, and we've been here all so we've been running around going to all the galleries and doing everything you can do. And I have an assistant that drinks a lot, so she's been hitting a lot of the pubs. <laughs> so if you see her, her name's Corby. She's the one with all the beer. Um, the other is a more personal um, question. Uh, years ago, you can... I will, Hmm. There I go. Um, you came forward with your mental illness, um, and, it, and you making a stand for that made it easier for people like me to be more forward and open and open conversations with other people. Being mentally ill is cool. Totally agree. I mean, it's not easy to do, and if you're doing it, you rock. person to be able to come forward and, and start to break that stamina. Well, I've never thought of it as a bad thing. I mean, I was sort of proud of getting, I mean, I went through some awful stuff. I stayed awake once for six days and thought everything on TV was about me, which is very awkward depending on what channel you're watching. <laughs> And then the TV started sending me messages, and, and that stuff's really hard. And if you can do that, you're going to really appreciate it when that stuff isn't difficult anymore, when you get through something like that. And you can be proud of yourself for having been able to do that. I grew up, though, in a very public family. Um, not that everyone knew everything about my family. My father was bipolar, but he didn't talk about it. But if you hung out with him for about three minutes, I think you'd know. Uh, he shot speed for 13 years. I think he did talk about that. So I guess I'm like my father. But people did, it came out, I think, when I went into rehab. So I thought, well, I can either let this be out there and be, have it be someone else's version of what's the matter with me or what my challenges are. Or we could do my version. And I prefer mine.
to, you know, I see you do a lot of stuff uh, on, on screen and you, you sit, you're sitting in a closed set and then to, to come to a place like this and see the fans and see the people you touch, what does that it's feel like? It's my favorite part of anything to do with, with my career. I love the fans, I love talking to them, I love finding out about other people. Otherwise you're, you know, alone. You know, I like finding out, I like talk, talking from the best of myself to the best of someone else, and you always get that with the fans. You always do. And so I just get the best of everybody. Thank you so much for sharing all these amazing stories. We have time for a few more questions, so let's keep on going. Uh, hi, Gary. I'm, I'm a huge fan, and unlike most of the people here, I was introduced to you through the Blues Brothers. Uh, and, uh, uh, so, I know it's been a, probably a number of years since you actually thought about that movie, but I'm curious, no. I'm curious uh, if there were any stories or moments you loved working with on that particular film. Oh my god. That film was a hedonistic explosion. Uh, John Belushi leading the way with uh, doing... They, Dan Edwards, a uh, nickname for John was the black hole in space. Because if you got food near him, drugs near him, alcohol near him, I think maybe even women, all gone, gone, gone. And now this isn't a good story to tell people, but don't consider me a good role model if you're young. But John, I tried LSD with John Belushi. <laughs> Which, you know, I can recommend now that he's no longer with us. But um, we tried it on the set, and we were shooting some of the scenes with all the policemen in the movie. And I thought they were extras. But they were policemen. So that went well. So does that satisfy that? <laughs> But um, uh, I didn't have a say in it. I thought originally it would be Deborah Winger would have been good in it, but no one would be better. No one was better than Marilyn. And uh, yeah, I was there all the time. It was so much fun to watch a Don film. English. I don't mean English like the English language, literature, and so forth. I liked writing from a very early age. He gets so bored when I talk about books. <laughs> Jerry, jump down. I like that. The I couch. like French. But I didn't go to college, so I didn't get a chance to like philosophy and history, which I think I would have liked as well. Hi, Carrie. Um, what's your favorite Star Wars film? Empire. Everything. <laughs> so 
Marshall, you walked around in that outfit all the time. Thank you. Hi, Carrie. I just wanted to say that I uh, love Princess Leia. You are my role model as a female character, for sure. And um, I really want to be an actor, so hopefully one day I can act alongside you. And um, I was wondering, do you agree with the majority of the fans that Chewie should have hugged Leia after Force Awakens? Yeah, I do. I do. Thank you so much. Yeah, hi, Terry. Thanks for everything. You are a huge inspiration and just the coolest freaking lady ever. Um, I was wondering if you had any thoughts about um, there's been more female representation in like action movies and stuff lately, and I was just wondering if there is anything that sort of stood out to you, any characters, or just any thoughts on that? You know? I like, you know, uh, is it Jennifer? Lawrence. I think she's Ooh. awesome. So I like watching her. I she's really she's a really strong character. I think the only thing about movies now is you really what you don't see when you're making movies are the crews are pretty much mostly men. Other than like the continuity girl, they don't even call it a continuity woman. It's the continuity girl, and so that's something that could probably change in the movie business. But I think the characters with women are getting much better. Of course, I think Daisy's character, uh, Ray, in the new film is awesome. I think she's awesome. When you met Daisy on set, did you have any advice to her, kind of stepping into this role? Not to go through the crew like wildfire. <laughs> I sort of was preparing her for the fans. I said, you know, you're going to get some long letters, and you're going to get some great letters, and you're going to get some of the weirdest letters you've ever gotten. <laughs> All right, I think we have time for one more question, so let's jump back over here. was released, if he did not survive, wouldn't it be very ironic that his character's death happened? That's what? really bad ironic, though. <laughs> it is very bad, I know! That's like the worst ironic I've ever heard. <laughs> also, uh, sad to hear what happened to R2-D2. Oh, I know. He was a lovely, lovely guy. Do you think he will return in episode 8 of Star Wars, or...? R2-D2? Yeah. I, you know, I think he will. You know, they... Confirmed. There's also, you know, it's harder for Peter Mayhew to be Chewbacca, so he, he gets some help with that. I mean, so, I, I, and I, <laughs> so I get some help with floating through the air and stuff like that, so, not that I do that. But if I did have to do that, that wasn't a divulging thing. <laughs> I, I Disneyland experience exclusive. The princess Leia maybe falls through the air. My niece, who Mark, uh, Ray. behind my back, went out and had a space date. <laughs> he seems too mystical to, you know, screw around. They're <laughs> on that rock. Who's he getting to get laid with? <laughs> I would certainly be proud to have her as a relative, but I'm prouder to have her as someone who's following in my that will be Well, kudos to the next movie. Alright, well, you can uh, check out her book, The Princess Diaries, out at the end of November, and maybe you can see her in an upcoming Star Wars film or two. Who knows? Give it up for Carrie.